I was just thinking I about this hero myself, but it's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's... It's good in the fact that it's a ton of minus armor that works out well with Lifestealer, and it is a vehicle for the Lifestealer. But I don't feel like Slardar has a good lane. You get to last pick what is five probably seconds. the mid lane here. It's what I'm assuming is just a five position puck. Um, and so you have puck gyro in the safe lane against Slardar, and I don't know how Slardar like, gets on top of these heroes to do much. I, I wouldn't like this to be a five position puck. Hopefully that's a... A mid puck. Hopefully, that's a mid puck. You think it's? I, I, could they go five on the bird? They could go five on the bird. They could play Mars in the four, or the five, or the three. It's been done before. But yeah, they're banning out to the tusk here. So I guess they they figure five on bird. Turn to ban. And mid puck. So. All right, they ban out the tusk. tusk. So they are they're thinking it's going to be a either a, a five phoenix. Then, I mean, is Lion still in this? He is. Yeah, you just take Lion here. I'm pretty sure. I mean, you have decent initiation that way. I think uh, last hero on Felt. Ten seconds. I'd like to see somebody with a a dispel, but five. I, I don't know if you can fit that in. I don't I, think anybody with a dispel is that good here. What like Omni Knight, uh, Legion Command. I mean, you need a mid laner. A yeah, you need a mid laner. Here. You need like it. It feel really bad running an, another melee core with Life Stealer and no, Slardar into this draft. Man. I should ban out the IO. That would have been a good that would have been a good hero, actually. Uh, gyro with that lineup would have been very strong. Yeah. I'm not crazy about Gyrocopter, uh, by the way. I don't like I think that he's gonna do pretty good against Slaughter. You know, he's got a lot of armor to work with. He's able to stand his ground and fight with uh, Rocket Barrage. Uh melee heroes, of course, don't do well Ten against the homing missile. Remain. Uh but other Five than that, you know, seconds. once the, the lading phase ends, I think Gyrocopter's a little bit underwhelming. I people keep trying to pick him. But I, I think that he's not such a great carry in this patch. Yeah, it's it'll be interesting. I think one of those things uh, that comes that works with Gyrocopter is he does just do an immense amount of damage, and that's what makes the hero pickable, right? I think other than that, like um, the hero doesn't really offer a ton. But uh, yeah, just having team fights where you just gyro in the in a matter of four or five seconds and do like six thousand damage. Uh, it's pretty much one of the only heroes in the game that can do it. And if you have lockdown in the form of a puck and a Mars, it, I can I, I can see it. Also, Warlock is in the pool. I just realized. Yes. Which Warlock Gyro has been one of the most broken combinations of the patch. And the fact that neither team is uh, wanting to pick this hero up is very interesting. Ten mm. seconds. It was uh, picked up what seven out of eleven times in the uh, upper division for the first for week. Low division, it was picked up. Uh, it wasn't picked up as much, but it was picked up in the last three of the four matches. Uh, so I'm surprised that it's fallen out of popularity a little bit here. It's possible that they they could fit in a position five here on the yeah. side of five more Midas. You just go so five I, Warlock, I, put Phoenix on the four. Mm -hmm. I I kind of like it. I, I think that Warlock runs a little better, a little bit better with a bunch of like tanky frontliners. You can, can you just run forward. Uh, once you get the twenty minutes of the round, you can just spam your uh, Shadow Word off onto everybody, heal them up. I think you could just sit the Warlock behind the Gyro in the late game, right? So Warlock or Gyro can be kind of your dangler. Oh wow, that is a new hero, yeah. Neff. It is now. He was given a, a number of buffs the most recent patch. Then he got uh, nerfed. And then he got nerfed. I he think he's playable, though. I, I think know, he's playable. Man. You're going to be dealing with a lot of uh, disables here. You're going to be able me. to use uh, your your disarm regardless Wait, of that. Is Timbersaw Five available? Seconds. Timbersaw is available, but would kind of ruin the rest of your draft. Wouldn't you just couldn't you just go like five puck and pick a Timbersaw here? And go mid on Timber? Timbersaw mid? I mean, you'd get owned by Burning Spears. Yeah. You do all right, but that's a lot of magic and stacking damage uh, that he's doing to you. I mean, like, yeah. as much as you'd want to run Timbersaw into a triple strength uh, core, it's it's hard to fit into the draft. Mm -hmm. And they might be a little bit discouraged after that last game. They Drop grabbed the Juggernaut. Cheese. That's one of the, the counters to the life stealer I was talking about. It was. So yeah. is this... It's five gyro. Mm-hmm. So it's... That one became, I don't know, it was popular in the last patch. They didn't necessarily nerf Gyro at all. They only made uh, Core Gyro more powerful. They gave him an extra shot on his flat cannon. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm still not a very big fan. I think that Zoro's going to struggle against a five gyro in the lane. The gyro's copter's going to be able to stand his ground. He's going to be able to trade with him with Rocket Barrage. A lot of time, one of the reasons Slaughter I feel is very good is anytime a uh, position five tries to fight you, uh, you just hit him a couple times. You're always going to come out on top with Bash of the Deep. Against a gyro copter, you know, it's one of the rare cases uh, where that's not the case. Ten seconds. Uh, that end, I think, like Undying is also pretty good against you. You just able Five to walk around, get the K remain. stacks off. But this game, they're gonna struggle. Like yeah, DNM, that's a weird one. Yeah, DNM Juggernaut or a puck, Ixter on the Mars, lies on the Phoenix. Are they gonna be in position three again this game? I mean, it looks like it, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe they just decided to, to switch their roles around here on Five Man Midas. Yeah, it seems maybe Lies wasn't having as much fun on the three position, so Aixer boot camped him to four, and uh, Aixer has now been promoted in farm priority. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's possible that uh, Lies decided that uh, Aixer needs to play position three instead. <laughs> Who knows, man? I mean, Aixer uh, is. Uh, it's it's never easy changing positions, right? Like playing a new role is very difficult in Dota because they each role plays a very different type of Dota. So, um, speaking of growing uh, pains, Lice has actually thrown Aster under the bus, and if uh, Five and Midas win this best of three, it will be Aster doing the post series interview. Pog, that's what I want to see. He was voluntold by Lies. I love voluntolds, dude. Voluntolds are the best. a pretty good uh, winner right there on Phoenix, I gotta say. Yeah, it is. Alright, we've got game number two here. Five Man Midas versus Felt. Felt took game one here. They're uh, picking up a last pick Huskar Forte in the mid lane. Uh, not a hero that I've actually seen in the NADPC. Neff, have you seen this hero yet? No. Uh, no idea what this hero is. Never seen it before in my life. Interesting. <laughs> Just looking at this set, I'm not really sure how I feel about Excellent it. Excellent idea. Hmm. Juggernaut looks uh, pretty pretty. He's completely maxed out on this. He's got the script sword as well. Ooh, that one's nice. I like that one. A lot of glowing going on with this Juggernaut. The golden cat as well. Oh wow, yeah. To Golden Cat. He has the blade form. Uh, whatever this thing is, that was like the super rare Golden Juggernaut set. That was like two hundred dollars. Which one? The the belts, gauntlets, and the uh, pants that he's wearing. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Very sparkly belt. Surprised he's using the most recent top over just the gold top to finish out the set. It looks so good with that. But back to the matter at hand. We have Dota 2 to watch, Neff. Another three runes, this time going to five man to Midas. And last time it was uh, three runes move instead of Felt, right? Yeah. With the uh, Ancient Apparition, Ancient Apparition Drow, all them just walking at the top rune. <laughs> It worked. It doesn't start with too much regen uh, on this slaughter. I think just confident he's able to, to trade with these heroes here. Slaughter does feel pretty good against uh, Juggernaut in the lane phase, I gotta say. Not great against the Gyrocopter. Justice going for the. Uh, yeah, there's no way he's able to get it. Just isn't uh, near that rocket in time. You know, for that reason, Slaughter does struggle. You're a loser. Yikes. <laughs> Off the mark <laughs> with that one. He well plays him, but he doesn't uh, tip him, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, it's like I said, it's a very well-mannered region. This is a huge yeah. wave pushing into DNM's tower, and Gyro... Try, I mean, I'm assuming he just wants to... Oh, will he pull the range creeps? No, it's okay, he's fine. All right. DNM's actually going to be very happy about the positioning of this lane. As long as they can deny the pull here on B2... Which, as long as he stays on top of Justice, he should be fine. Just isn't super afraid of uh, this Gyrocopter right now because he doesn't have the Rocket Barrage. It'll change pretty quickly here. Just hit level two. Yeah. 
tries to play around with the trees, get in a fog, and get a little bit of that damage. I think he managed to dodge about half of it. Drops the sentry, doesn't find anything. Unfortunate. Zor, trying to build up uh, stacks here. On the DNM. It's just the first point in the bash. It scales pretty well right now, but uh, level 1 is still a little bit underwhelming. But he's not going to be doing as well in this lane here on the Juggernaut as he did in the last game. Pretty much uncontested for farm in the laning phase on the Morphling. So I'm looking at, at Huskar mid now, and this is... Well, should I actually be looking at Rubik? Oh, he's fine, okay. Um, this is one of those heroes that, like, was always a cheese pick, right? There there just hasn't been a patch where Huskar is not either, like, completely broken or just a last pick cheese, right? They're, they're just... That's just been the nature of this hero forever. No, we're gonna talk more about the Huskar. Oh, bottom lane, Phoenix. Goes for the dive away, lies. Maybe can regen enough under the tower with the tango. I think he does. Yeah, well done. Bye. Survives that uh, last tick of that one, but isn't able to drop these fire spirits onto the life stealer here. You want to be able to slow down Comfort's farm with that one. So now he's uncontested as well. I mean, X is doing a little bit uh, better this game than last. I mean, he did okay in the last game, but uh, he ended up giving up two kills. I don't think he'll do the same this game, but. I think that's just him being a little bit more careful against the life stealer. Uh, top lane. Exciting. Yeah, just is out. Never mind. Doesn't have a stun. Hmm. Phoenix just suicides into the tower. Gives it up so he can get back with full HP and mana. Yeah, it's one of those things where it does feel bad to do that now, but at the same time, it's much better than walking all the way to the base for 30 seconds. It feels stupid, bad. You still get a TP for dying to the tower. Wait, do you really? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that shouldn't happen. Top lane Zor, a lot of uh, harassment damage here. Should survive though. But uh, gets that salve swapped in. I'll use that. Has boots coming out now as well. So should be a lot safer in this lane on the Slardar. This is one of the things that you need to do uh, to survive against the Juggernaut. Uh, now, hold on. Uh, we talk about DNM skill build yet? Come on. This man uh -huh. with stats. Wait, oh my he gosh, got, he did. He got attribute bonus here on DNM. I did a real one. Yeah, it doesn't actually show. It doesn't show. You have to hover over the uh, talent tree. Yeah, he's not holding a point, so. Yeah, you hover over the talent tree, it'll show you plus two to all attributes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that. Uh, yeah. I've seen certain draw rangers do that, actually. <laughs> like, uh, actually just going stats like level like uh, two and four or something. Yeah. I'm not sure that's the play. I'm pretty sure you want crit, but maybe against Slaughter, you want uh, the extra two stats so you have more HP, more armor. But uh, crit definitely like way faster for farming, way better for harassing enemies. But maybe that's the play in this lane. I do miss all stats. There's I no feel way like the second point into it. I feel like Ice Frog went out of his way to make sure that leveling stats was never viable. No. Like, like, it used to be on. It, you, I think they made the skills more balanced and worth. Yeah, that's what it was. Anti mage, it was part of. The, you had to do it. It was just a skill build, because uh, it went from like twenty six percent magic resist at level one to like thirty two at level two. So it just made more sense. We were more tanky. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 what I mean. Like they they did their way in rebalancing a lot of the abilities to where it, you know, it was a lot more sensible to just actually upgrade the ability. He's holding this next point. I want to see if he put the second point into stats, but I there's other things to cast. <laughs> I don't know. This is the most uh, intense portion right now. Let's see, it's expensive. What he's going to do with his skill build? We look at the bottom lane. Uh, Mars is doing pretty good against the life stealer, sitting at 30 and six to life stealer's uh, 30 and 0. Oh. So, yeah, yes. he's a little bit behind in experience, but. Most, for the most part, you you're pretty happy about this. Like Aegster is finding a lot of farm. He's got phase boots coming out, uh, right now. Plus a clarity, which will be really nice for him. I mean, this is your counter pick. Uh, you picked this to do well, all right. Uh, bottom. Let's see if he can slow him enough. Pops the enrage, so he's not able to spear him back. So, Just too tanky. Yeah, a good chunk of damage. Ooh, mid lane, a coil does come out onto Huskar. A lot of damage coming in. Do they finish him off though? Pops that fairy fire, a lot of regen. First blood goes to Lies on the Phoenix. Finally taking down the Huskar there. Mm -hmm. Just not enough armor at the moment. Took a ton of physical damage uh, when he went down. In fact, just autoing him. He does have the three points in Berserker's blood, which is great. You know, max strength uh, as regen, but 
Yep. When just you're not, not tanky, enough. you're not going to survive despite how much HP regen you have. And it doesn't look like Justice is going to survive either. They commit onto him. RRL. Two more auto attacks. Take him down. Rocket. Oh, missile. Yes. Got him. All right, Juggernaut did decide to go for a point in Healing Ward and a third point in the spin here. So he is just this 3-1 in all stats. I can rest easy now. Don't have to be uh, nervous. I'm sure he, he's probably done with grabbing stats. He's given the fact that he's jungling now. He's going to wish that he had a point in his crit too. Dropping pretty low here. Nice. Going to dive bottom. Oh, the infest though. That was a sick play. Topping him off. Aegster. Gonna be fine though as he backs off. Justice now down here. Can't commit a whole lot. He can lift him up, he can pull him back and throw him. It's just enough. This it's a lot of match damage. 200 magical damage burst thanks to that uh, one point arcane supremacy. <laughs> Level one lift always feels uh, pretty underwhelming. You never want to end. You rarely want to use it unless you're absolutely sure you're going to secure a kill. Because yeah. it's like another Fade Bolt you could be using on the enemies. They did buff it a little bit, right? So that the cooldown no, they, uh, they was reduced. They buffed the cooldown earlier, yeah. Yeah, uh, they buffed the cooldown, and then they, it does 0.2 longer stun duration at level 1. So it's like slightly when better. When you drop somebody, not when you lift them up. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's still pretty underwhelming. Because a lot of the time, you're going to be wanting to lift somebody up and throw them back instead of just throwing somebody onto them at level one for one second and the re slight repositioning is better than 0.2 seconds ever see the item that rubik's getting the best item in the game for him what is it it's a keen optic baby oh, oh that's a nice find yeah curry's flying out to him right now net worth wise top of the charts basically going back and forth are going to be the slardar and the jug but i mean it's a it's a straight line let's be honest between the first five these guys are all exactly the same farm all within about 200 gold of each other they commit on the huskar he's swapping his helm of iron will in he doesn't have the armor yet he might just go down because of it yeah exhortation in from zor maybe they get lies here there's gonna be the coconut bounces it ends up finding the two it's just the two supports but a two for one still pretty decent Two, so they do get punished for that rotation there on the Huskar, but Huskar having a not great time. It's also a lot of space for these side lanes. They TP'd in a lot of people. And so Comfort, uh, you know, he's doing what he can, but Aegster is kind of just free to do whatever he wants here at bottom because, uh, you know, Witch Doctor's not here. And top lane, DNM is just completely free. Oh, all right, Puck just died. Yep. Yeah. And so they uh, lose one, two, three heroes off the back of that uh, Huskar rotation. It yeah, it wasn't. It, I don't think it was that bad initially, like losing the two heroes, but losing the third makes it uh, definitely not that great. Yeah, especially given that it's Puck. So regardless of the fact that they killed Huskar twice there, he's still uh, you know so pretty far ahead of this Puck, up uh, 300 net worth. He'll complete his armlet, another 300 gold, and then he's going to be much harder to kill. I think if he had the Helm of Iron Will in his... Uh, in his inventory rather than his backpack. He was swapping it in as they were diving him and he had that armor bonus. They might not have been able to kill him, but it would have been close. The no life break think... yet on the Huskar, so they're just gonna let Rubik go down here. I think he's just gotta chill for a little while. Uh, he knows it as well on the Huskar. He needs yeah. that armor before he's participating. Oh, they're clearing a stack. I was like, what's being called down over here? That's a triple stack, okay. Happy about that one. They immediately smoke top. They do scan this though, so Slardar. Oh, he has no TP. Zor is in a world of hurt here. There goes the coil. And they're just gonna be able to uh, try and close the gap here. Missile comes out. The Blade Fury, a kill going the way of RL here on the puck. Ends up stealing the Illusionary Orb on the Rubik, which is actually pretty great. Yeah. I, I always prefer getting a uh, winning rift just to the fact that you have a silence, but. Usually are pretty good for closing the gap, you know, people uh, hit him with two nukes and throw him time from pretty far distance. In fact, that might just be what he does. He'll throw maybe another Lucia orb, do some damage, silent stuff. He's got to get out of here. Yeah. He does, and I think he will. Justice, one last hit, not going to catch, but they do end up stunning down the Huskar? Yeah, he's just blown up. Hey, he died three times in a row now. He just you walked in, having... and Lies is actually <laughs> going to find Justice. That's a kill. I mean, you can take that illusion orb as far as you want, but you can't escape that fire, baby. Lies. Fantastic plays on the Phoenix here. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Five bit minus. I think this is this is the opposite of what happened last time. Uh, <laughs> Uh, just some kills not going their way, diving a little bit too far, being punished for it. Now, uh, Five and is uh, diving in, you know, finding all these kills. I felt a little bit off their game this time around. I think they need to hit uh, six on a couple heroes. I think if they find this on uh, the Witch Doctor, a little bit better off. They can chisel some of these fights around. Tay, I think, needs his second item. I think, yeah, now he's realizing how important a BKB is. They have all this magical nuke. Uh, they have all these stuns available. If he's able to, to play around the Pucks, uh, Dream Force, play around these arenas and spheres coming out, his game is going to be a little bit easier. What does Justice right now, get though? here? Another Illusion Reorb. There's a lot of great spells for Justice to steal in this game. He's got to be happy to be playing Rubik right now. Crawl comes out onto two. It will just still take the tower, the infest into the Slardar here, try and tank him up, and Zor, with all that bonus movement speed, makes it back across the river. All right. Well played again by Felt. Now life's still moving back into the jungle. Huskar needs to start to contributing in some way. It's hard for him right now. He doesn't have this BKB available. He's probably feeling a little bit discouraged after these last couple of deaths. Uh, but if you're not doing things on the map, it's like, okay, what was the point of last picking this Huskar? DNM is having an excellent time. He's yeah. opted not to go bastard. He wants to play this game fast. He's going uh, phase through to the Manta style. He's holding another point. He can't keep getting away with this. I mean, there's no way you don't start maxing Blade Dance, right? You need to crit. You need these crits. There's, at this point, there's no. You don't need to hold points at this point. It's like you're one level less than you normally are. Rubik, been on to justice, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, he's just gonna drop here. No way, another he's kill by he's done. yeah, another kill there from the supports. Well played, he's still holding the point. I mean, he's holding two points. This. I can't, I gotta look away. We'll look at Roshan. Ah, yes, the good old Slardar takes Roshan. I mean. I'm not right here for it, Tay. This might have been one of the things he needs to feel confident enough to fight. There's a regen rune over there. It's Tay. He feels like and he doesn't have to pick it up and takes down Comfort instead. Yeah. You don't want too much HP on uh, the Husker anyways. All it does is slow down your attack speed. You're not farming up as quickly. You want to be sitting at low health. He doesn't even have a uh, power tread. So if he was sitting at max HP, his attack speed would be so overwhelmingly slow. Yeah. Over here in the triangle, grouping up. They have a smoke? They do. Yeah, smoke we'll up see a smoke here. Right under award, though. Yep. So, felt. If they position this correctly, they're going to sit up on the dire high ground here. They might smoke themselves. Yeah, they infest into Zor. They're just going to smoke up. They're going to smoke up behind themselves. Tay. Oh, right. They're looking to turn this one. I mean, it makes sense. They got eight is available. Tay, you can bring him down once, but I think you're going to struggle to get him twice. You have to commit a lot of cooldown. Still, there's a crazy good team fight coming out for five minutes from Midas. We talked about this during the draft. The arena into egg, dream coil, call down. This it's is so Zor. much to deal with. He, it has to be a good initiation from Zor here. Yeah. Oh, they see the vision up here on the high ground. There's the stop. They get Mars and the gyro. Now Zor, he's going to go down, but the damage being done. Omni Slash onto Comfort. He's got to run the egg drops, and it pops. This is the team fight we're talking about. Five man Midas. They take down three. They get the Aegis. The question is, can they get the Huskar a second time? Healing War topping everybody off here. Thetu going at nice spear away, but Tay going to get chased down. The missile does connect, and it ends up being a double kill for the Puck. It was just too much. I mean, that damage coming out there from DNM, the Omni Slash on the two heroes, he had to hit with it. I mean, take a look at this fight recap. Everybody played a part here. Yeah. 2,000 damage coming up from every person on 5 man Midas, and regardless of you getting a decent initiation off, you don't do enough damage on this Lifestealer yet to blow up somebody when they're hit by this Slytherin Crush. If you can't do that, they're going to be able to step and get off all their spells here on 5 man Midas. If they get off all their spells, you're not going to be able to take the fight against them. Well, that's the thing, too, is, right, this Lifestealer has to kill the egg. No one else can get to this egg. And so yep. if it's not the Lifestealer... Um, you're just, I mean, at least until Huskar has BKB. Once Huskar has BKB, the egg, you know, doesn't really matter. But 
he's still, oh, I mean, what, 1,300 gold away, so. Misplayed there by Felt. They lose Aegis. They lose uh, their net worth advantage. Now 4k up now, 5-man Midas. These aren't feeling as good at the moment. So again, stalling things out, waiting for Tay to finish his next item. 0-4-0 zero, and zero on this Huskar last pick. This is, uh... I don't want to say I told yeah. you so, Nev, but this is kind of what I expected a Huskar to do. Uh, I was uh, I was thinking that he'd pop off this game. Maybe things will be different when he gets another neutral light. You know, Fairy's Trinket, not ideal. Maybe He'll get himself more armor or something. Yeah, to their top sure. Yeah, that's better, I guess. This hero uses a lot of mana. <laughs> Look, man. He's focusing on the positive. The Horte. He's going to pop off, I'm telling you. He at least gets attack speed and armor out of this, I guess, right? That's the, that's the main thing. Ooh, okay. The Quicksilver Amulet is pretty good. And now a Ring of Aquila. Which he'll, t he'll hold the Aquila over the other one for sure. Yeah, look at that. Uh, two armor aura. Uh, another nine agility. It's like three armor. That's what he needed. That's what I was talking about. The NM has the Quicksilver Amulet. Zor also having one. Having it on Zora is pretty funny because you just press his sprints and then he's a zoomy. Okay, no, yeah. they put it on Life Sealer instead. Yeah. It's okay on Life Stealer. I mean, you pop Rage, you move even faster. Cool. Fast something. Not wanting to commit the arena here, it seems, and Witch Doctor is going to get out as a response. Yeah. Wait, escape. does Arena. Arena doesn't break uh, trees anymore, does it? Or does it? It still breaks trees. Uh, okay, I wasn't sure if it was one of those spells that got like owned by not breaking trees for some reason. Yeah, it breaks uh, trees because wait, I'm, yeah, I'm almost positive it still breaks trees. Yeah, so you can I think always it does. Uh, hit people with spears and connect them to the side of the wall. Otherwise, yeah. it would be a doo doo spell. Yeah, it's true. Well, not doo doo, but worse than it currently is. When it first came out, did it not break trees? Uh, I'm pretty sure it always did. Oh, okay. Okay, so looking to push towers now on 5 man minus. Uh, now with advantage hasn't really changed a whole lot before he did a 3k in the last couple of minutes. So they are farming a little bit slower than the heroes on Felt, but they're looking to take fights against them. Felt, uh, they're probably pretty discouraged. They need this BKB on Huskar. Uh, they want to finish up the uh, SNY here on Lifesteal. He'll be able to chase people down a little bit easier, but I think they I think saw they the smoke. More than... Oh. Sorry, they, uh, they smoked right as he placed a ward. And uh, now Rubik is just going to go down to RRL here on the puck. Using the coil, the Witchblade, a lot of damage. He was forced to commit the coil, though. He's, uh, he held the Dream Coil until after the Waning Rift came out on the, the Rubik. Well, throughout the, uh... He is fast, but not fast enough. Great cutoff there from Aigster. He'll pick up themselves a second kill. You know, I thought for sure they saw this smoke because... Uh, Witch Doctor walked over and placed this ward, and I thought they smoked right on the edge there, but maybe not. It's possible they saw it these uh, just choosing to farm out dangerous areas of the map regardless. It gives them more space to the, the husk guy, gives them more space to the life stealer. I mean, the comfort is uh, farming in a very interesting place given the state of the game. The enemy team's triangle. I can see the jungle. This is, uh, this is RL Puck at its finest, man. He is starting to pop off. He is 6-1-7. and seven. He's got the Blink, the Witchblade. He is almost, almost, like over halfway to this Aghanim Scepter. And uh, this is when it becomes a real problem for Felt because this Ag's Coil, they cannot deal with. You have three melee strength core or three strength cores. Huskar, you could argue, is borderline melee. <laughs> And uh, speaking of things, oh, gets the BKB the off time. there, but he's just getting melted by this Omni Slash. He will be able to take down the Mars. Can he heal through this go? He's got to get outside of the arena, the backside of the fight. Comfort and Zora, they jump wise on the Phoenix. He gets the dive. He drops that egg. Can they close the gap? They will not. It's time to run. Witch Doctor caught by that missile. DNM double kill now on this uh, Juggernaut. I mean, it looked like it was going to be a decent fight for Feltnef. Yeah, but just too much damage coming in from everybody. They're not able to stand their ground yet. And despite the fact, you know, they managed to, to pop uh, the BKB on the Huskar, dodge things, uh, you come out in on the back line of the Life Stealer. Regardless of these things happening, you still don't do that much damage on your side. The moment the Huskar turns around because he realizes he can't stand his ground against the Life Stealer, uh, you're not pumping out any damage anymore. 
I, I think it's just an issue where nobody's hitting them. You're running away in these team fights, and even if you get a good initiation off, you don't do enough damage fast enough to blow somebody up. You need to kill one of these heroes of five man entities before they're able to, to pop their entire spell kit, and they haven't done that this entire game. Yeah. I mean, they they did open the fight like killing Mars, but again, he got but the he arena got everything down. off. Yeah, he got the <laughs> arena off. He's able to trap in one of the supports, and uh, you know the infest bomb on the backside lies has this Yule Scepter exactly for this reason. He Yules himself, gets the dive out, repositions for egg, and suddenly fights over. Right, you gotta run. You can't get to the egg in time. You don't have rage. Like it, it's just five man minus are playing the fights really well. And I, I think the only solution to this is more damage on the heroes on Felt, but uh, you know they just had to, to build a BKB up on the Huskar. Now they feel like they need a Assault Cross and a Lift to be able to survive this Omni Slash. Uh, it's just uh, incredibly rough. The solution is clear, but you can't really afford to go for it because you're afraid of getting uh, blown up in these fights. Huskar is now going for a Satanic. I, the thing is, I just don't know what Huskar builds. Like, this hero doesn't farm very fast, and... I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm underwhelmed by Huskar. I'll say that. Oh, mid lane. RO, the really aggressive blink there. I don't know about that one entirely, but not punished, so it's fine. Interesting choice. I Yeah, he needs lifesteal. I think that's good because, uh, you know, he survived the initial burst. He was able to survive the Omni Slash on himself, but he turned around after uh, the Juggernaut, like, you know, continued to, to commit onto him. He blew up the Mars, and uh, then he's forced to walk away. So if he's able to survive the Omni Slash and continue to stand his ground in his fight, uh, which the Satanic will allow him to do, I think that's good. Well, they know they're smoked up here as the Ward Sentry uh, scouts the Ward that they place. So five man minus, just forced to D Ward. Not much that they can get out of this smoke now, but. For enemies. Taking over this uh, Radiant Triangle is huge, and D2 does get the most important Ward. Right here on the high ground, so they just replace another. Roche gonna respawn in 23 game. seconds, Neff. I think the five man Midas end up getting this one. They snuck the Roche last time, it was early game. They managed to grab it with uh, Huskar Slardar. This time around, there's no way they're able to fight into the pit. Five man Midas, complete domination over this map. He's on his way to a. I have Scotty here on DNM. What a better way of slowing down the regen of Huskar than preventing him from regening. <laughs> DNM itemized. Kind of weird this game. Went for the Manta style first. Uh, went back for a Maelstrom afterwards, and now he's going for an Eye of Scotty. He's also got the Blade Fury shard, which is a very good shard. That extra 100 uh, movement speed is just so good at getting in and out of fights. Especially if he's just trying to cut out the Lifestealer or the Slardar. Like, they just go on him and he Blade Furies and he's like, y see ya. Yeah. Be able to stand his ground and uh, fight against the Huskar uh, as well. Get the auto attacks off and survive the Burning Spears at the same time. Is that coming out while your blade's spinning? Spinning Blade Fury. They're grouped up pretty close right now on Felt. They know... They know something's up. And they smoke. They're gonna go sit behind the Huskar maybe. Uh, there is a ward sentry here on the high ground. I mean, this is a great position here for f uh, five and Midas. Once again, Zor, he's gonna pop. He blinks in. They miss the crush, and now the arena. Zor pops his BKB. Egg up on the left side of the fight. They can't actually get to it. It's perfectly placed. Comfort taking an entire Omni slash. TNF gonna continue the chase on the low ground. D2. There's the coil. RRL finds two supports by themselves. TNF trying to just TP out. He is gonna make it. Tay doing some work. You've lost two, and you uh you still have BKB at least, but a spear from Eggster. Gonna set up the kill. What a sick play. A uh, sick play for five in my that was a disaster for Felt. They blink onto the high ground. The slow dark ring crush connects with nothing. Mars uh, just walks away from it. Puck managed to get the dream core or sorry, the, the phase ship off. They get caught in the arena. Then the life stealer gets caught out by the Omni Slash and forces to run away. The Huskar not able to, to stand there and fight DNM either. That felt so bad. That was yeah. like the worst possible initiation for Felt. By the Midas, constantly coming out on top of these team fights. It, these are all like surprise initiations by Felt as well. They're just botching them regardless. I mean, they went into an area where they just don't have vision, right? Like they're they smoking up into the enemy high ground. There's nothing here to give them any vision to work off of. 
And now, as a result, they get themselves Aegis and uh, Cheese. They'll take the Shard on over to the Phoenix, so you can now Sunray during Supernova. Um, yeah, it's 12,000 gold lead here for five-man Midas. Oh, Coil comes out. Was that a Coil? Mm -hmm. I don't know on to who. I think it missed. No it just yeah, Zor does pop the BKB. Gonna just bash down Aixir here, but the healing ward comes out. He is still infested, but he's just not doing any damage. Tay, he goes in. There's the light break. He's gonna... I mean, can he, he even do anything, do anything here? Aixir no. just backpedaling, but Tay will finally kill him with all of that uh, magic damage. Instead, now DNM on the run. They finally take him down. That's the Aegis Cheese. Dropped into the inventory, but Tay, he's got to get out. He's got no BKB. Toggling the armlet, might be able to keep himself alive. Justice, oh, what a blink forward by RRL and the Witchblade damage. Going to be able to help finish off the Rubik as DNM just blade freeze into the base. They buy back on the Huskar. Zor, he goes down as well. The Sunray is just doing too much work. Tay, he's got to get back into the base. He's all by himself, but <laughs> can he even do it? The dive board, he pops that disarm, but Tay dies in the end as DNM able to help finish him off. Now it's the this Juggernaut, the Omni just comes back up. The Delta Split comes out. Boya comes in trying to soak it, but it's too much it's magic damage, baby. A double kill, he pops the cheese, continue the dive for the tier fours, and cut. Koya cannot survive. This is like a seven for two, Nef. What just happened? That was a complete slaughter. Didn't even matter. They missed a dream call at the start of that team fight. They couldn't have any of them. Nobody is able to stand their ground. And Huskar, and you slowed down that team fight because of the arena, uh, the, the Mars is just standing inside it. The auto attack's not able to connect because if anything could within 100 range of the arena, uh, which of course means you can sit on the side of it, your range auto attack just won't connect, regardless of him having the BKB up. Just chasing him down, running them in these team fights. And the Heroes on Phelps don't do enough damage either. Juggernaut was never in any danger despite sitting so low. He had the cheese in his inventory the whole time. Yeah, and he baited Aged out like uh, his first life, right? That was the idea. Baits yeah. out that first life with the Aegis and then comes back, swaps in the cheese, and he's like, all right, guys, I'm ready to fight. Let's go. They're able to die like that with no cares in the world. It's just such an overwhelming advantage. And I, I like their hero matchup, but I think a lot of this just comes down to how underwhelming you feel right now on Tay. His entire game, he's felt like uh, just a little bit behind needing his next item forced to farm, and you want to be doing things on this uh, Huskar. I mean... You were right, Ricky. This is a very underwhelming last pick, and I think a lot of the position that they're in right now on Felt comes down to this Huskar not being able to, to fight or contribute uh, to these team fights. Juggernaut has spider legs now. Good luck. Spider legs Biden. just feels so dang good on Jug. It is unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't go a Battle Fury this game, though. A lot of time, like, Towers you're playing a Battle Fury carry, you farm up super fast, uh, you want to get, like, Sick, uh, you want to be seven slotted, so you just take your boots out and put another item in your inventory. <laughs> but he's got phase boots right now, he's gonna hold on to this. But the extra movement speed that he gets, uh, being able to move up and ground, uh, on the cliffs here when they're trying to assault high ground is going to be very useful here, especially once he's given his Agnum Scepter and he can just swift slash after walking up uh, the side of the hill, be able to grab people from all sorts of positions. It's not comfort by something, but where is his courier? What did he buy? Am I crazy? I guess I'm crazy. I don't know where it's it is. All? No, he had the AC, but I don't know. Elven Tunic, is that better? That's got to be, yeah, right? That's much better. i going to hold on to that one. I mean, he's got uh, Maelstrom here on the Juggernaut, but still, the invasion is going to be pretty useful. It's not going to be enough, though. It's also about the same amount of movement speed, right? Isn't it seven oh, versus eight or something like that? Quicksilver amulet? Yeah, Quicksilver amulet is eight active, right? Yeah. Well, RRL just punishing supports again and again, and this was coil, so, or not coil. This was uh, an arcane rune. It's just it makes it mean uh, that he has that much more time to be up. Double damage. Oh, there's the arena. They find Zor. He doesn't get the BKB off the Omni Slash. There was a support Witch Doctor there. BKB does now come out from Zor. He has Blink in one. He'll be able to make it into the base, no problem. But both supports down again on Felt. They buy back on the Witch Doctor. All you've used is the arena. 
Yeah, he's sword slashed. It's already back up. Uh, he might just drop this on somebody again. He's got his double damage in right now. So, all of a sudden, he's going to turn on you. <laughs> turn on you and just quick uh, quick switch slash here, which stocks it. I'm not sure you can survive even that. They smoke they up on the backside so that it's just DNM and vision, right? Like, they actually, they know they're back there. They saw the smoke, but how do you initiate on this, uh, well, right like that, it would appear, but... He's sitting so healthy, the Juggernaut, he just pops Manta Blade Fury out, and there's the coil, the fight, it turns around, the egg drops so far away, Huskar, he's got to decide what to do, but he's just held in place, he can't do anything here, he's just trying to hobble, the Swift Slash comes on through, they dive even further into the base, Tate gonna survive, Ghost after protecting the two, Koya, that's gonna be a dieback, no one down yet on the side of five man Midas. But all of the spells have been expended, maybe they get a big catch here, DNM trying to run away, Tay goes in, is it going to be enough though? Aixer pops the BKB, Spears, Huskar against the wall. They finish him off. No buyback now. It's not worth it, man. They buy back on the Rubik. Comfort doesn't have rage for five seconds. Trying to get out of here. The silence comes out. Will the missile connect in time? It doesn't. Can he keep this going? Comfort, he's got to find something here, but he just doesn't have the damage all alone. And now RRL's back. He's on the backside. He gets a side. They're continuing the chase. They're jumping for this Rubik and they take him down comes out but that's picked off as well this rack not long before it falls it's impressive and uh, there's just nothing they're able to do in these team fights to try to stay on the ground comfort wants to go back in but he's not gonna be able to do any damage dnm on the offensive coils available rl can just drop this he gets stunned up by the slardar but there it is he's gonna go ahead and coil up the life stealer as they chase down the slar bkb does come out they will be able to take him down phoenix Protected by the Aeon Disc for the time being. Infest into a creep. He should be out just fine. Comfort. And try and come back in. Continue trying to slow this down. But there's the Swift Slash. Omni still on ground for 50 seconds. But Comfort, he's getting so low. He Healing Ward. Damage. Taken down. Yeah, he just, like I said, like we said, he doesn't do damage against these high armor Agi carries. And it just feels so sad to be playing the life. So he just tickles them. And Tay has to pop the BKB. Arena of the Spirit catches the Life Stealer. 80 seconds, that's the GG's. They're dropped, four heroes dead on Feld. Five man Midas tie up the series, 1-1. One, one. Uh, despite them trying to hold their ground there on Feld, it was an uphill battle this entire game. So these uh, network charts and just a second here, five man Midas nonstop on the offensive. It, it felt like it, it all went wrong with like the, the first uh, smoke into the enemy team smoke. They decided to fight, they didn't have enough damage. And they're fighting this massive team fight of uh, the dire team. I mean, the the Phoenix eggs. Uh, there was never a solution for. It. I don't think they managed to bring it down a single time. Uh, they just weren't in the position there on the life steal or the Huskar. The arena is always coming in, holding people in the place. And the DNM always able to get off the Omni Slash onto the target he wants to in these team fights. And we talked about in the draft how uh, life stealer uh, hates playing in these high armor agility heroes. DNM always able to stand his ground and fight against. Uh, I guess both Lifestealer and Huskar. Neither of them could fight him at any point in the game, despite uh, DNM not having crazy amounts of damage. Just uh, overwhelming uh, from all, all the, these AoE abilities on 5-man Midas and Felt. Uh, they couldn't blow up any of these heroes fast enough, despite these favorable initiations. Yeah, I mean, last game it was like a near flawless game from both Tay and Comfort, right? This time for 5-man Midas, it was all DNM, all RRL. Like, DNM goes 10-0-14, RRL goes 14-1-21. Just absolutely popping off this game uh, on this puck, crushing the team, uh, the damage dealt at 42,000 damage. The next closest is the Juggernaut at 28. So... It, this was just a uh, an incredible performance. I mean, RL's puck, we've seen it from season one. Now into season two, he has just uh, done wonders on this hero. And uh, if it's a good puck game and against, you know, the, the lineup that you see on Felt, uh, it was a great puck game. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we'll see what they do in game number two. is uh, definitely a struggle here for Felt in this one. But we get to go to a game three, Neff. This is uh, all we could have asked for. This is fantastic. Yeah, I'm just looking at this uh, right now, thinking about, you know, the uh, CNDPC at like, uh, I think you see in the game, you see like damage per uh, gold at the end. It's like economy in the ratio. RRL, he had uh, 21k net worth. He had uh, 41.5k hero damage. Yeah, that's a lot. It's that pretty good. It, insane amount of damage for how much he farmed. This guy played so aggressive, so well on this uh, this pocket. You know, on the other side, uh, Tay had 11k net worth there and only did like 12k hero damage. The guy 
didn't manage to come online the Husker, but they were experimenting. You know, they wanted to take this to game three. They're doing this for your entertainment. So stay tuned, everybody. All right. We'll see you in a bit.